This is Red's newest camera, the 8K Super 35 V-Raptor, and it can produce fantastic images like this. In this video, we'll be seeing how this new sensor performs, comparing it to the VistaVision Raptor and the Komodo, as well as showing you the images that we've managed to capture with this new sensor. We've used the original V-Raptor a bunch, which means that using the new one was really easy across the different shooting scenarios. This is because the 8K VistaVision and the 8K Super 35 Raptors are actually incredibly similar. Their bodies are actually identical, and so is their software feature set, as they are essentially running the same operating system. They can both shoot at the same frame rates across the different resolution options, and have the same input and output capabilities. This new Super 35 Raptor is roughly £5,000 less than the original V Raptor, which does make sense given the differences in the sensor sizes between them. Both versions of the V Raptor feature 8K sensors, however one is Super 35 and one is VistaVision similar to how RED had Helium and Monstro in their DSMC2 line. The sensor in the new Super 35 Raptor has a physical size of just 26.21 by 13.82 mm, which gives it a 3.2 micron pixel pitch. This sensor is actually even smaller than Komodo, and I think that's for a good reason. The Super 35 Raptor has a clear demographic that RED have designed it for. People who want the reach out of a smaller sensor, while still capturing 8K combined with all the other excellent features you would grab a RED camera for. This would be a camera that I can see being used on macro, product, wildlife, sports, and broadcast productions. But for own operators not shooting these types of productions regularly, I think the VistaVision Raptor may be a better choice. However, one big benefit of the reduced sensor size is the ability to use lenses with a smaller image circle. This really increases how many lenses you can use it with and also opens up your options when it comes to using broadcast or cine zoom lenses, which there are more of in the Super 35 market. We've got this new Raptor on our camera and lens tool now, where you can see exactly how your chosen lens covers this new sensor, or any other cinema camera for that matter. Anyway, let's take a look at how this new 8K Super 35 sensor stacks up against the Komodo and the original Raptor. Like its VistaVision brother, this new Super 35 Raptor can capture some really great looking high frame rate footage. It behaves the same as previous RED cameras, where as you lower your resolution, you crop in on the sensor, but can increase your frame rates. This means as you window in on the sensor, you can go from 120 frames per second in 8K 17x9, up to 240 FPS in 4K 17x9, and then up to 600 frames per second in 2K in a 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. As you crop in, the image does get noisier and less detailed, but what you find acceptable will be up to you, and balancing resolution and frame rate is a common thing for anyone who shoots high frame rate on RED. The images we've captured look really great, very detailed and very clean from compression artifacts. The high frame rates available in RED cameras are another reason why they are often used in productions such as wildlife or sports, where you want to capture the most detailed image possible while recording at higher frame rates. When it comes to rolling shutter, the VistaVision Raptor was already very good, and the new 8K Super 35 sensor performs very similarly to it. You can see very, very slight jelloing when panning very quickly, but performance is excellent given the resolution of these sensors. Unlike the other two, the Komodo uses a global shutter, which means that you have no rolling shutter artifacts. However, performance of the Raptors is excellent for rolling shutter sensors, and unless you are panning incredibly quickly, you should be very, very happy with its performance. Unsurprisingly, the Super 35 Raptor can capture some incredibly detailed imagery. The 8K sensor paired with the R3D internal RAW and various compression ratios available means you can really choose how much compression you want on your image. When filming in highly detailed scenes, such as out in a forest for a wildlife feature, you'll want to shoot at the lower compression ratios, or HQ. Whereas filming some B-roll in a studio for web content, you can easily go down to LQ or even ELQ. Having shot a lot with the original Raptor as well, I think the footage out of this camera looks just as detailed and great as that one. When it comes to colour, all three cameras can be matched incredibly easily and quickly due to them all featuring RED's most recent colour science and the same tweakable parameters. Personally, I think RED's colour science is pretty great, and this new Raptor Super 35 sensor can produce the same great image you expect with really great looking colour. This is partly thanks to the IPP2 color workflow and the very flexible R3D internal RAW, which is great to get a look quickly or heavily grayed. Colors straight out of the cameras can get pretty close. However, where we can see a slight difference is when under and overexposing them. For our latitude test, we grabbed all three cameras and our trusty Otis 55mm and RF to EF adapter. Here's a breakdown of our methodology. And of course, one thing to bear in mind is that 
these results have no noise reduction applied. So some of these clips will clean up nicely with a little bit of work in post. Anyway, let's take a look at the results. When it comes to overexposure, the Super 35 Raptor actually looks to perform slightly better than the VistaVision one, and Komodo of course. Performance is similar up to around four stops, where we can start to see a difference between them. At four and two thirds, we can see a difference in the clipping on our chart, where you can see some colors clipping on the VistaVision image, but not on the Super 35 version. Both Raptors have a very similar rated dynamic range from red, and I think while the Super 35 Raptor looks better here, it doesn't when looking at underexposure. Here we can see a clear difference between them all. Unsurprisingly, the VistaVision Raptor looks the best, but that's not surprising given its sensor size. Colors look better and the noise isn't as green as the new Super 35 Raptor. Compared to the Komodo, the Super 35 Raptor looks far more detailed and less noisy, which is good to see. So overall, the new Raptor is quite good considering it's such a small, high resolution sensor. The Dark Eclipse with some noise reduction can look really good, but the original Raptor will win in lower light scenarios. As we said before, when shooting R3D there is no noise reduction in camera, so you'll need to do some in post-production to get the best looking imagery you can. When shooting in R3D, you can change your ISO in post, which is really helpful. Personally, with RED cameras, when shooting in good light, I'll try to keep my ISO as low as possible while trying to preserve my shadows and highlights using the great exposure tools these cameras have. In low light, I wouldn't push the camera really above 3200 to 6400 ISO. Above that, you are going to get some very noisy images, but performance does look better than the Komodo and the older generation Super 35 8K sensors from RED. There is some chroma noise in there, but definitely more Luma, which is the more pleasing out of the two to have. Both of the Raptors feature a pre-record function. While other RED cameras have featured pre-record systems in the past, the Raptor is the first to feature an actual cache for it. Whereas with the previous cameras, they would be writing and deleting from the memory card itself. This will help with the longevity of your recording media and also allows for pre-roll to be stopped, as the camera will only be writing to the card once record is hit. This is a much better system and a great change by RED in the Raptor. You may be wondering why the camera we've been showing is grey, and that's because the version we have with us today is a special edition of the camera called Rhino. There's no black version available yet, but hopefully this comes out soon. So who is the 8K Super 35 Raptor for? Well, the key differences between the two Raptors is the sensor size. If you're an owner op looking at the two, ask yourself whether or not what you mainly photograph would benefit from the extra reach possible with the smaller Super 35 8K sensor. If not, the V-Raptor's larger VistaVision sensor has better low light performance, very slightly better latitude performance, and of course, you get the ability to get that larger sensor look. However, I think there are a few key markets that this camera will be a really good option for, such as macro and product work, some broadcast productions, and the big two being sports and wildlife. Sports and wildlife will both benefit massively from the smaller sensor as it will give you extra reach out of your lens and allow the use of more longer zooms, especially cinema zooms, as most of them have been designed for Super 35, such as the incredibly popular CN20. All three cameras have their place. The Komodo is really at another price point compared to the V-Raptors. However, for some filmmakers, the step up in image quality and frame rates will be worth the price difference to the new Super 35 V-Raptor. For others, the Komodo will do a lot of what the Super 35 Raptor can. If you want to buy anything camera related and want some great advice, try heading over to our website or get in contact via the details below to speak to one of our knowledgeable staff. If you're interested in buying or renting a Raptor, I'd really suggest checking out our feature length Raptor review that we released a year or so back now, as that goes into a lot of detail on the original Raptor and so much of it is relevant to this new Super 35 version apart from what we have covered in this video. Anyway, let us know what you think of the Super 35 V-Raptor or if you have any other questions down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.